So have you ever wondered whether overclocking your unlocked processor is worth it, and whether it'll actually provide any noticeable benefits when it comes to things like 3D rendering or video editing or just everyday tasks in general? Well, we're going to test that in this video. Now before we get into it, I want to clarify this video isn't going to teach you how to overclock your processor. It's not going to teach you anything about that specifically. We're just going to look at what performance benefits you can get. So my CPU is already overclocked. Uh, right now the overclock isn't applied, but we're going to run some tests and then we're going to uh, initialize our overclock and then run those tests again. Now um, these tests are the same tests that I ran uh, comparing my i7 to my Ryzen when I upgraded, but we're going to run the tests again on the Ryzen processor because a few things have changed with the system. Um, and in addition, I have uh, upgraded to uh, Creative Cloud 2018 in between then and now. Um, so there might be some different optimizations with Premiere Pro with that test. Uh, so we really have to run that one again to make sure that um, we're having fair results comparing the overclock. Uh, but with that said, let's dive in right here. So just to start out with, we have this Premiere Pro sequence. So again, this is the same sequence that I used in my last video. And we're going to go ahead and uh, just render this and time it basically and compare it um, once we apply the overclock. So uh, this is the default. Um, let me go ahead and set up a timer here. All right, so here we've got the YouTube 1080 preset. So I'm going to start the timer as soon as I hit this export button. Uh, one thing I just want to show you real quick uh, is if I pull up Ryzen. So you can see our CPU is running at the default 3.5 gigahertz. You can see um, all of the settings are on default right now. Uh, except for our memory, which is uh, just running at the default memory, which shouldn't affect anything at all. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit export, and I will start my timer and we can compare it. All right, so we're gonna stop the time as soon as the dialogue closes out. All right, so we have a time of four minutes and six seconds, just about. So we're gonna go ahead and note that time down. All right, so now let's go ahead, might as well save this and um, we'll close it out and let's bring in now Cinebench. Um, so uh, you can see I have a score here. This is from when I was playing around with overclocking. Let's just ignore that for now. Um, <laughs> and go ahead and run our CPU benchmark. So again, you can see if we pull up Ryzen Master, we're pegged at 3.5 gigahertz. Um, temps, pretty normal. Um, voltage, which is 1.28. Uh, so default, completely default, except for our memory, which is just running at the RAM stock speeds, the speed that the RAM is rated to run. All right, so with that, you can see our score right here is a 1399, which is roughly what we got um, on our last test. Uh, we'll go ahead and again note that down. Um, again, this is before overclocking, so let's go ahead and move that out of the way and bring in our last benchmark, which is PCMark. Um, um, we'll ignore our updates for now. Um, but let's just go ahead and run our default benchmark. All right, so as you can see here, we have a score of 4461 overall. But we're just concerned with this digital content creation score right here. Um, so really all we need is that 4450 number right there. Um, so we're going to note that down real quick. And then let's go into Ryzen Master. All right, so again, as you can see in Ryzen Master, currently we're in this default profile, uh, which is just running our CPU uh, as it would normally out of the box. But if we go over here, we can see we have uh, already ready profile, uh, 3.9 gigahertz across the board. Um, these settings are tweaked a little bit and our CPU voltage is bumped up to 1.375. So let's go ahead and apply that and it takes a couple tries to apply it for some reason. Ryzen Master still has some tweaks in it. But as you can see now, if we go back to our default, is that we are running at a pegged 
3.9 gigahertz. Um, not quite across the board right here, um, but that is where our CPU will sit when it's under load. So let's start by going ahead and opening up uh, that Premiere project again. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing we did last time. We're gonna export our media. We're gonna export our media using that same preset. You can see we're saving the same place on the disk. So we're just gonna hit export and start at the same time. So there we go. And there we have it. I actually was a little bit late there because I didn't expect it to close out so quickly. Uh, but as you can see, we have, uh, if we round up, well, technically we should round down because I'm delayed. Uh, but let's just say three minutes and 48 seconds, which is a pretty big improvement. All right, so we can go ahead and close this out. And then let's go ahead and uh, once again, bring back our Cinebench and let's run this again and see what result we get. So you can see it really looks like it's zipping along. If we open up Ryzen Master, you can see all of our CPU cores are pegged at 3.9 gigahertz. We got our memory clock as up here. CPU is running a little bit hot at 70 degrees, but honestly, that's not uh, exceptionally hot at all. And a benchmark like Cinebench is really going to push the CPU compared to real world. So I'm not too concerned about those temps. Uh, but now, if you see um, what we got right here, we got a 1520 score. So we'll go ahead and record that. That's a pretty sizable improvement. Uh, and then let's go ahead and run our last benchmark, which is um, PC Mark. All right, so if we look here, we can see our overall score has gone up to 4876. Um, but again, we're only concerned with our creative score, which uh, went up to 4838, which is about a 400 uh, point improvement. That isn't a terribly big improvement, but it is about what you might expect, considering uh, with PC, what PC Mark is testing. Um, they're testing the GPU, the RAM, the uh, disk speed, just as much as they're testing the CPU. Uh, so just overclocking the CPU a little bit wouldn't be expected to give you a big performance boost. All right, so if we look at our scores here, um, not sure how well you can see those on the screen, but we have about a 20 second time improvement for renders at about a four minute to about three minutes and 40 seconds. A little above that, but uh, roughly rounding. Our Cinebench score went from 1399 to 1520. So that's about a 121 point increase. And we have uh, about a 400 point increase with our PC Mark score. So as you can see, uh, overclocking doesn't provide massive benefits, but it does provide real actual tangible performance benefits. And if you have a overclocked processor, a um, chipset or a motherboard with a chipset that's overclockable, uh, you have an adequate cooler, you have an adequate power supply, there's really no reason not to overclock because it's really easy and you do get a pretty, uh, a not I wouldn't want to say significant, but you do get a noticeable performance bump. So it's definitely worth it to do. And uh, you know, when you're if you're putting together a system and you're deciding what parts to get, you know, deciding whether you want to get just like an entry level like Hyper 212 Evo as your cooler, or whether you want to invest a little bit more and get something like uh, uh, entry level all-in-one cooler or a higher end uh, CPU or air cooler, that's going to cost you, you know, sometimes as much as fifty to sixty dollars more. Better power supply. I mean, usually you don't have to spend too much to get a good power supply uh, or a motherboard, really, for that reason either. Um, but you're generally looking at spending a little over $100 more to get that overclockability, to really take advantage of overclockability on your processor. But as you can see, it does provide performance benefits. So you have to ask, you know, do you want to invest in an overclockable system? Do you want to invest in not just an overclockable CPU, but all the other parts you're going to need to really make that viable? Uh, and uh, based on that, these are about the performance benefits you're going to get. I'm running on an ASRock uh, X370 
killer SLI AC motherboard, so it's a pretty nice motherboard, uh, not super premium, uh, but it is definitely, does have overclocking in mind. Uh, I also have an EVGA uh, CLC120 all-in-one air cooler, and an EVGA Supernova G2. Um, so I have quite a few very nice parts that allow me to really get the most out of my processor. And so, you know, you have to ask, do you want to invest in those higher end parts? And um, in asking yourself that, you can look at this and these are about the performance benefits that you can expect. Uh, so based on that, hopefully that'll help you um, decide whether it's worth overclocking your system or whether it's worth investing in overclockable parts. Uh, if so, if this video helped you out, please hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit that dislike button. If you have any questions or comments about any of this or any of my thoughts on overclocking, especially with Ryzen, uh, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button.